What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're checking out the Removu K1 stabilized camera. This little thing is actually really cool. It's basically a tiny little camera that's mounted to a dedicated gimbal and it shoots videos as well as photos and time lapses as well. I think I said as well twice. Anyways, it shoots 4K at up to 30 frames a second, 1080p at 120 frames a second slow motion, and 720p up to 240 frames a second, so you can go really, really slow with this camera here. It can capture 12 megapixel pictures with its f2.8 lens that is a 17 millimeter, it says right there, and that is full frame equivalent 17 millimeters, which is about 12 to 12 and a half millimeters on an APS-C camera. You get about four hours of recording time with the included and replaceable 2900 milliamp hour battery. All these batteries have got a little micro USB port so you can charge them, as well as a quarter 20 mount on the bottom that allows you to mount the gimbal to anything you want. However, that four hours of runtime is in 1080p only. Uh, if you shoot in 4K and you want the extra crispiness of 4K, you're going to be limited down to three hours of runtime. But you can charge it while you're recording and it's just that same micro USB port on the front of the battery there. And being able to charge it while you're shooting is really helpful, especially when shooting time lapses, which is actually a really neat feature that this camera has. You can set it up, you can pick the specific points that it starts and stops at, and it'll do a motion time lapse moving from point A to point B over a set amount of time. It takes micro SD cards up to 256 gigabytes. It has a micro USB charging port, which we've already touched on. It's got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack for external microphones, which is super awesome. That's pretty much the biggest complaint about vlogging kind of cameras is that they don't have dedicated audio, which really takes a lot away from the vlogging experience. If you got to listen through wind and this tinny little voice, uh, it makes, makes watching vlogs a lot harder than if you've got nicer audio. It's got a removable battery with a quarter 20 mount on it. And at the front here, it's got a gimbal lock, so you can lock that in place to protect it when you're not using it. And it's also got a lens cap that clips over the whole thing. So you can download a free app for this camera on both iPhone and Android. It seems to work very well and you can control pretty much every single function that the camera has through the app. You can also purchase an additional accessory kit which will set you back $50, which actually does include the lens cap as well as the lanyard and a USB charging dock and a little bitty microphone that plugs right into the side of the camera. It also comes with a screen protector as well as a lens cloth. Is that worth 50 bucks? I'm not so sure. It's pretty much just a lanyard, a piece of plastic for your cover, a tiny little microphone, and basically a shortcut to charging your device rather than plugging it in, which you have to plug this in anyways. I'm not so sure this is worth 50 bucks. You can probably find a microphone of similar quality for probably around 10 or 15 dollars, and then lanyards are probably less than a dollar. And I don't know what you're going to do about the actual protective cover. Maybe you can buy it separately, but I don't know if this is worth $50. Uh, speaking of $50, the battery, if you want extra batteries, that's also going to set you back $50. And that, I don't know if you'd be able to get away with shooting a whole day and charging in downtime or charging while shooting, but getting a full day of shooting out of this uh, may be a little bit of a challenge. So. It's kind of an expensive battery. The camera itself, without any accessories, will set you back about $430. So that comes in just a little bit underneath the DJI Osmo, which will set you back between $450 and $550, depending on which one you get and what accessories come with it. But this, I think, pretty much shoots a faster frame rate than any DJI Osmo. Um, the DJI Osmo Plus does have a zoom lens on it, so it can go from ultra wide to not as wide, definitely not telephoto but this thing is definitely cheaper than any Osmo that you can just buy straight off the shelf. But anyways, let's go ahead and see how this little camera does on vlogging style shooting. And we're gonna put it head to head against the A6500 and the 10 to 18 millimeter F4 lens. So let's go check out that footage now. All right, so this is some bad backlighting, but still, this is the Remove K1 and all of its glory. I think this will make a pretty neat uh, vlogging camera because it is so small and lightweight that you really, it's there's zero effort when it comes to getting nice smooth footage and having a small compact package with a pretty wide angle lens. Sorry. 
All right, so it's pretty easy to flip between the rear facing camera and the selfie camera, which they called selfie mode. You just bump the trigger three times and it flips around. And then you've got a front facing camera perspective. Two bumps on the trigger will recenter everything. And then three more bumps will flip you back around into selfie mode. This is the included microphone, which is just a little nub that sticks out the side of the camera here. And it's very low profile and it'll stay out of the way even when you're storing the camera. So everything can pretty easily be accessed with one hand on this camera. And its size and form factor make it super convenient. So this could be a remarkable little vlogging camera. I haven't done too much as far as reviewing the image quality, but let's go ahead and see how it compares side by side with my go-to vlogging setup, which is the a6500 with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens on it. All right, so this is a side-by-side -side vlogging comparison with the a6500 here and the Rode Video Micro. This is the 10 to 18 millimeter lens at about 11 millimeters, which is pretty close to the 17 millimeter full-frame equivalent that the Removu lens is. On the Removu side of things, we have got the microphone as well as the tiny gimbal itself. The smoothness of the video, there should be quite a difference between the two, even though there is optical steady shot built into the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter lens. So I'll be interested to see how this turns out. I am going out of the country in a few weeks, and I'll be interested to see if this little camera could be my vlog replacement for that trip. But I kind of doubt it because I'll be taking my Sony anyways because I like taking pictures and the wonderful shallow depth of field for some cinematic b-roll. However, the Removu does shoot up to 240 frames a second. So let's see what kind of cinematic shots we can achieve with it with its tiny little sensor and fairly deep depth of field. Okay, so something you guys may have noticed in some of those sample clips is that there is vertical distortion here. My head is kind of squished. If I move it over here, you see my head is kind of stretched back out to normal size. Now I look like I got a pinhead, and now my head looks normal again. That's vertical distortion, and it's a issue with this camera. However, they have released a software update, and I'm going to update the camera right now and let you guys see how fixed it is. And this is the updated firmware for it. I can't really tell right here looking at the little screen if it has improved as far as the distortion goes, but maybe it is. We'll take a close look at it in post. I'll put these side by side so you guys can see for yourself. And also, the update was supposed to help against uh, audio clipping with loud noises. And I think I heard some in the previous little video clip I did. So we'll see if any of this has distortion in it. So do you guys think that the firmware update did anything for this camera? I think that the improvement was noticeable and it is a welcome change, especially if they're trying to fix issues uh, that people have complained about. But in general, I think this camera is pretty solid. It feels pretty good in the hand. It definitely doesn't feel cheap and plasticky. It's got nice solid build quality. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys think I should take this to Europe with me this summer and try doing some vlogs with this camera or if I should stick with the a6500 and the tried and true 10 to 18 millimeter lens. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to know more about this or you're interested in buying it, check the links in the description. That helps support this channel and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.